to my channel. Today we're going to be discussing this, the Olympia DL2000. So to go with the specs real quick, it has a viewfinder, waist level viewfinder, my very first one on the 35mm camera, which I was very excited to use. The lens is a 50mm lens with a very limited aperture of 6.3 to 16 and it's also very proudly focus free, which I think is very apparent in the images. It has a single non-adjustable shutter speed and I have no idea what that is. I, it didn't come with a manual and I've been looking online and I can't find it so if you do know please let me know down below. Um, I got this clunky thing from a charity shop and I've had it for ages. I just haven't really felt a need to shoot it. It's kind of a bit chunky, it's quite heavy so it's not something you're just going to chuck in your backpack in case you kind of want to shoot it. But I did recently go to London with my friend Emily. I was mainly to film a few clips for my zine promo thing, um, which is available to pre-order, link down below. Um, but also just have an explore, so I thought it'd be a perfect time to use it. And it did also come with a flash, which I was excited to use. really soft and almost have like a disposable camera holiday aesthetic feel to them. Um, I would say the viewfinder, the waist level viewfinder is more novel than practical because there's nothing from stopping the sun from hitting it. So often I'd be shooting and it is quite heavy and not that easy to hold actually. It's not very, what's that word? Ergonomic. Ergonomic. It's not very ergonomic to hold. I always forget that word. Um, so you're already holding it with one hand, then you often have to use your left hand to block the sun out to create that bit of shade so you can actually see into the viewfinder. Um, it's also really small compared to something, I don't know, like the RZ. Obviously this is a 35mm camera, but with the image in it being mirrored, it's really hard to line up the horizontals of it being mirrored and so small. It does come with another window to act as a viewfinder, another viewfinder, but it's actually really far over and makes it really hard to frame the images. Well, I didn't realise that until the negatives came back. Um, I would say 90% of the images I framed using this, the framing was completely off. It was nothing what I was expecting. Um, and there's nothing more evident than this image, which I took off my housemate. So she's got a really cool tattoo sleeve and I'd got back from London with a few shots left. So we went to a forest nearby and there's some berries. So I got to pick some berries and I thought it'd be really cool leaning up to the berries with a tattooed arm. Um, and because I was taking it vertically, I decided to use this. Um, it's just a bit too hard using this. And I framed her arm perfectly in the middle because I knew it was going to be a bit off, but I thought if I went straight in the middle, then at least her arm would be in the frame. I was wrong. <laughs> it, yeah, you could barely even see it. There are a few frames I do really like on this roll, um, especially the one of the police car. But it probably says quite a lot about the camera considering the fact when I took it, I didn't use either of the viewfinders. I just saw it coming and I just tracked it like this, sort of holding it out my waist level. And I just hit the shutter and I thought it was in the frame. <laughs> so that's how I got the one of the police car, just by tracking it. And I didn't think it was going to come out because the unknown shutter speed, but it ended up being pretty cool actually. I shoot all these different cameras because I love the history of them, I love learning through new cameras and above all I just love film photography and I rarely think my latest charity shop buy is going to become my new go-to camera, although they did actually happen my Polaroid point and shoot 35mm one, but I think there's no point in hanging on to gear if you're just never going to use it again and for me this is just too impractical and unreliable to use it. Even though I kind of like the disposable camera aesthetic it's got to it, I don't see myself ever using it again. So I think it's right to put it back to the charity shop. Um, it did come with this flash though, which is compatible with most film cameras, which is really cool. So I guess there's a slight bonus to it. 
So that's it for this video. Hope you enjoyed it. Thanks again for all your support on the scene. It's been crazy and very overwhelming and I really, really do appreciate it. Let me know down below if you've ever shot a 35mm camera with a waist level viewfinder, how you found it, how you framed images and how you got decent images out of it. I don't think I've quite worked it out with this one and I'll see you in the next one.